I remember as I went there, this is my first visit, I, I pulled the car over. I'd been on the long journey up and I pulled the car over just before the, the tidal road begins. Got out of the car, looked across at the island and, and paused. And I wondered what it would do to me. It was a strange kind of pause because I'd been looking forward to going there for a long time. But I sensed that it would bring change, this visit. Not necessarily comfortable change, but perhaps, perhaps important change. I think one reflection would be that it was a lesson in keeping alert for wisdom, for life. From perhaps unexpected sources. And I think that openness needs, needs to, to be nurtured, but actually the wisdom is, is all around us. So for me, there was, there was wisdom and insight and new energy from visiting this place, which I'd not visited before. And being, open to the, being open to that was really, was really important. Another reflection would be about finding your place in a bigger landscape a physical landscape, actually being small in a big landscape, which is what happens when you go to a place like Lindisfarne, you're just a little figure on a, on a relatively uh, big piece of island. There's something very important about that. But also about finding your place within the, within the greater story. So f to go to a place like the Holy Island, where some, some of the great saints of the past have lived and worked and prayed and gone through all their stuff. For me, there's something important about finding my place within that stream. Again, just a, I'm just one little figure in that, but nevertheless, finding my place within that. So perhaps there's, there's some learning for us all there about finding the place of connection and the people of connection. It seems to me, at the risk of oversimplification, that there are three stages in the monastic life or the religious life. The first one is stillness, I call that cave. I mean, the first monastics in the, in the Christian tradition literally lived in caves, uh, searching for God, searching to know themselves. They went in stillness and solitude. Now, I don't think most of us are called to live in caves, thankfully, but I think it's really important that we find a place of stillness. A, a, a regular still point, centering point that we can go to. The, the next stage in the monastic life is, is community. Those first monastics discovered that it was really difficult to live in their spiky bit of desert on their own. So they began to congregate together to live in, in groups, or I think the technical term was skeets, small groups of caves or cells. And out of that grew the medieval monastery that we would recognize and think of, think of now. Um, a community being there for its wider community. Now again, for, for us, uh, regular or irregular people, I should say, uh, regular is the Latin for rule. So those of us who don't live under a rule are irregular. Uh, for us, irregular people, there's learning for us there too. So stillness and community. We need, we need community around us. And the third stage in the monastic life, I think could be called something like road. Uh, I think of it as creative and loving and at times resisting engagement with the world around us. So I get this from, from the monastic tradition in the sense that every so often there are some monks and nuns who say, do you know what? Living uh, within the cloister is not enough for us. We actually need to be out there where people are living on the road. So you see this in the, uh, in the great orders of friars like the Franciscans uh, who take their love of the natural world wherever they go. 
or the Dominicans, the order of preachers, who want to be out in the marketplace, wherever people are, uh, sharing the great, the great story. Now again, for us irregular people, it seems to me really important that we engage with the world around us as it is. Well, liminal spaces are, are, are uh, spaces of potential change, often quite uncomfortable places, places that we wouldn't choose to be in necessarily, boundary spaces between one state of being and another, a change place, uh, the sort of place perhaps where we're longing for something to be resolved. Uh, my experience, partly through going to Lindisfarne, is that actually these liminal spaces are full of possibility uh, and that we need not rush from them. In, in fact, we should not rush from them, but, but, but welcome them.